Peace, everybody. Once again, it's me, Uncle D. It's another episode of Uncle D's house. I'm out today. I'm outside because I'm going to uh, an event a little bit later, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to share with you guys again some thoughts that I had. I, I was scrolling social media recently and I came across a video. There was a mother being interviewed by a guy whose name escapes me. Um, the guy was gay and the mother had a child who had transitioned from male to female. The mother, uh, I, I, I missed the first interview where the uh, child, the, the, the woman's child was interviewed. I missed that uh, episode, I didn't see that one. But um, the person's pronouns, when they came on the show, they said their pronouns were she. So the interviewer addressed the, the person as she. The mother goes on a tirade about, I know what child I had and I know I had a male child and you know, you saying that it's a she is disrespectful. And I was like, wow. So I'm watching this video, right? And I'm not really nosy when it comes to comments. I really don't care what other people say. I might read one or two, that's it. But I saw a comment from a friend of mine who agreed with the mother. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, wow, okay, here we go. We still don't have enough education. We still don't have enough education. We still don't have enough conversation. We still don't have enough understanding. And I, I, I didn't know what else to do. So I looked, I was again, scrolling through social media and I came across a video that I think will help. So I am going to let you guys watch this video and I will be right back, okay? So as a board certified gynecologist, I've taken care of many women with um, infertility and sometimes we can't find anything wrong. So we'll check their chromosomes. And it turns out that they have XY chromosomes. And um, further testing usually shows that they have a, a condition called androgen insensitivity syndrome. Inside the uterus, we will all develop into females if not exposed to androgens, which are male hormones. The Y chromosome is, is responsible for producing androgens. Some people, some fetuses, are, have a condition called androgen insensitivity syndrome. And even though their bodies are producing testosterone and other androgens, their body doesn't respond to it. And so they develop into a perfectly normal looking female. However, they have XY chromosomes. They move through society as women, they marry men, and the only time a problem comes up is when they can't get pregnant because XY males cannot get pregnant. But they've been in society as women. They never knew the difference. You never knew the difference. So what do you call these people once they find out that their chromosomes are XY? please feel free to look it up. It's androgen insensitivity syndrome. And the complementary um, syndrome that happens to women or that happens to XX females in utero who are exposed to testosterone is that even though they're XX females, they, the androgens that they're exposed to usually from their adrenal glands, so this is called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, cause them to develop into the male, um, into a male phenotype. So they have a penis, they have all the other things that men have, but they usually don't produce sperm. So we call them men in our society because that's the role that they carry. Obviously, I don't see them in my office because I'm a gynecologist and as far as they know, they're men. Um, but it's much more complex than people like you would make it seem and I would hope that knowing that even in nature, things don't always go as you expect it to go, would cause you to lend a bit of mercy 
to other people who have varying degrees of desire to fit into different roles in our society. Hey, if it doesn't affect you, I guess I'm wondering, why do you care? Hmm. 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 Biologically, chromosomally, you can look like a female and have an XY chromosome set and vice versa. You can be biologically male and have an XX chromosome set. We are not looking at this, <laughs> this whole picture when we are making these decisions, when we are, you know, getting in our feelings about what somebody wants to be called or something like that. It doesn't matter um, what you feel about what somebody wants to be called. And what kills me is that there are so many people of color, there are so many women who allegedly are minority, they're just a minority, uh, a minority politically and as far as the power structure goes because they outnumber us. Um, I don't I don't know how it is that we haven't gotten to uh, see the nuance in sexuality. Also, I don't see how people of color don't see how the same arguments that are being used against the LGBT community are the, are the same arguments that they used against black people. The same arguments they used to justify slavery, the same arguments they used to uh, take abortion rights away from women. All these arguments are the same. And they're made by the same type of person. They're made by people who, the issue that they're talking about doesn't affect them directly. We're talking about an issue that affects women. We're talking about an issue that affects people of color. We're talking about an issue that affects LGBT people. And uh, white men, the idea of white men, you know what I'm talking about, the idea of white men is who is telling everybody what they should think. And what kills me is that we drink the Kool-Aid. We start thinking it instead of using our critical thinking skills. And what bothered me the most is seeing people who work in education, seeing people who I know are, are shaping young minds who have these attitudes and ideas, who still are not educated enough to, oh, that, what it, 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 it's like a practice, it's like a, a, a forced ignorance. It's like an ignorance that they're proud of. They're, they're proud of the fact that they haven't done enough research to come to a conclusion where you just know that everything has a spectrum, just as color has a spectrum, just as, you know, their height has a spectrum, and everything, there's a, 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 day, a gradation to everything. Everything. Everything has a gradation. And we cannot see the fact that sexuality also has that gradation. We only see binary. We see male and we see female, and we want everybody to fit into these nice little categories of male and female, and it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, I know there, there are people who are born with circumstances that are beyond their control when it comes to sexuality, and I am sure that they wish that they had been born in full binary mode. I'm sure that there are LGBT people who wish that they fit the binary mode. There are a bunch of them who have killed themselves because they did not fit the binary mode. And we have people running around who just can't take a second to go on their smartphone. This, and that's the, the, your, your phone is smarter than you. You have the smartphone and you won't use it to just look up a few facts and say, look, okay, there's X, in order to have a person, you need these two chromosomes, the X and the Y. Either they're gonna have XX, which we call female, or they're gonna have XY, but sometimes the phenotype of the person is different than the chrom what the chromosome suggests. And you know what? I'll do even better. I'll let somebody else tell you. I'll be right back, Hold, right, right, stay right there. We're living in a time now where you're born a man and you can say, I, I believe I'm a woman and there's a sex change. Same thing with a woman becoming a man, those kind of things. How does that fall into, because that doesn't fall under 
quote unquote religious beliefs. Some would say to some degree it falls under science because it involves medicine in terms of the injection of hormones and things of that nature to alter your body physically. We don't I, I'm a person that openly admits I don't know what to say. I don't even know how to ask the ask the question in this day and age, Neil. That's how confusing it is to somebody like me. What is it to you who seems to understand a hell of a lot more than most humans? Was that because you're an old, unwoke? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to be woke. That's the sad part. The about. I, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to be. Yeah. I'm trying to be get understanding. Off my lawn. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be understanding. My, my my daughter said to me, "Dad, get with the times." I mean, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Dad, you got to be embracing okay, first, and receptive to all things. I'm like, okay. Let me agree. Let me let me throw you a lifeline okay. here and say, I don't think we will ever be as woke as the next generation. So okay. Put that Thank out you. there. Thank okay? you so much for letting. No matter me how hard we let try. me know that. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I actually spent a whole chapter on that very subject, and it's called uh, gender and identity. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's the issue is simpler than you have attempted. Okay. to present. Okay. It, all right. So if you look at our our our, our chromosomes, all right, um, they can be XX or XY. Right. That I know. And that, and that is that's binary. That is, there's male and there's female. And there's some variance on that that's a very small percentage of the total. But I want to focus on those two for the moment. That's male and female. Okay. So now let's move past that and say, uh, do those chromosomes manifest in society? Okay. All right. So stay with me now. I'm saying. Do they manifest? I'm right here. So now I, I did this experiment. I was on the New York City subway. It was in the winter. Everyone has a, a big coat on. And so I'm just looking at heads sticking out of the, the winter coats. And I said, why do I know who's male and who's female as I go down the line? This is just a simple question I asked myself. And I say, well, these six people are female. Those four are male. Why, do I, why am I sure of that? I was sure of it because... What I was queuing on, queuing on were, were, were features that are secondary and tertiarily added to a person's appearance. So all the girls, compared to the boys, I looked at whole, what are the girls doing? They have, on average, longer earrings. They have two earrings. They have, on average, longer hair. They have eyeliner. They have tweezed eyebrows, longer nails, on average. Painted nails. They have um, uh, makeup, a, a, a blush. Okay, they, and if there was any hair on their upper lip that got that got uh, um, removed, tweezed or what's a, with the laser, yes. right? Got removed. Any hair between the eyebrows removed. If it's all trimmed there, and I said, those are the girls. What are they wearing? They're wearing girls' clothes. Well, how do I know they're girls' clothes? Just go to the store. They know how to sell you girls' clothes. There's a whole section. For just girls and women, okay? I'm just saying girls and boys. How about the boys? Oh, um, the boys. If there's anyone who is a little thin and flabby, they went to the gym. So they walk, they sitting down and they got some muscles they can show you. And they've got, oh, yeah. And they might have, grow a beard and a mustache because that's a manly thing to do. And they're wearing boy clothes because they went to the boy section of the store to get it. Mm. And if the women's chest is not as large as she wants it. She goes and gets surgery to make it bigger, as 300,000 American women do every year. Yes, I know several. You're right. Okay, yes. so so my point is, apparently, the XXXY chromosomes are insufficient because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. Mm. Either the one you're assigned, the one you choose to be, whatever it is. And so now, here, so, so now just to, to tie a bow on this, I say to you, somewhere I read, somewhere I, I think I read that the United States was a land where we have the pursuit of happiness. Yes. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm going to I'm going to put on makeup. I'm going to do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. Why do you care? Yeah. 
what 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 business it is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? And what I found in the human mind is that we go out of our way to put things in categories, in bins, mm -hmm. all right? Because that makes it easier for us. Mm -hmm. So that's why people come up to you and say, well, you're a boy, you're a, uh, you're a girl, choose one. Which are you? I say, no, maybe I'm a little of both. Wait, 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 maybe I'm a little of both. No, you have to be one or the mm -hmm. other. No, I will not be what you require just because you can't think on a spectrum. I'm going to be what I want to be. And we have known this as children. Every single class, there was the girl who was the Tom. We have words for them. Tomboy. There's the tomboy who wore boys' clothes, right. who got dirty with the boys. And she didn't have long hair. She had short hair. And even if she did have long hair, it was tied up in a bun so it didn't get in the mm. way. We uh, Do you know Joan of Arc? Yes. Do, do you know why? She, half the reason why she was burned at the stake back in the 1400s? Most people don't know. I, I check, ask people. They don't know. Half, the reasons brought against her was for cross-dressing, for dressing like a man. Now, if she's going to lead uh, soldiers into battle on a horse, you can't do that in a skirt riding side saddle, mm -hmm. okay? So, of course, she's going to wear pants, all right? But here's a very early example of someone who didn't fit a gender category held by others. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is, in the people I identified as female and male on the train, if some of those females were chromosomally male, it didn't matter to me. I, I see them as female. That's how they present. See, here's the problem. Many of us, again, try to fit everybody into a binary system. Either you're absolute male or you are absolute female. That doesn't work. Uh, I'm reminded, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to see how I can pull this together with what I'm trying to, with the point I'm trying to make. Many years ago, I worked for a company. It was a uh, nonprofit agency. And if you're familiar with the city of Newark, this company was down on Ferry Street. Ferry Street is a street that begins on the other side of the train tracks from Newark Penn Station. So many years ago, the the look of the people changed as you proverbially crossed the tracks. It went from uh, predominantly black people to where Ferry Street started to predominantly white people. Because the office was on Ferry Street, obviously there were a lot of white people around. And, you know, I would walk down there after school to uh, go to work. One day I went to go get a uh, television out of the van that we used. It was the TV, <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself up here, obviously. It was the TV VCR combination. It was the monitor with the slot in the front for the VCR tapes. So I go get the television and luckily my boss had come outside with me to help me. He was a white man uh, who lived in New York City. And as I'm walking back across the street with the television uh, in my hand, I'm stopped by a by a, a policeman and he's like where are you going with that tv <laughs> and it was the most i if it wasn't so stereotypical which made me laugh it would have been sad because i'm just carrying a television across the street but he saw a black man carrying a tv and figured i'd stolen it and he was asking me you know he was going to get to the bottom of this my boss came and said he's carrying for me my boss had to rescue me he had to speak for me he had to uh, validate what I was doing. A white man had to come and validate the actions of a black man doing his job. I say that to say, many of us don't realize that when we say things like, you can't be this, you can't be that, when, when a person is telling you what gender they are going to express, we don't realize that we are doing the same thing. We are taking agency over somebody and telling them who they are and who they cannot be, who they can and cannot be rather. We don't realize that's the same thing that has been done to black people in this country. And people hate it when uh, the, this, the struggle for black rights in this country is compared to the struggle for LGBTQIA plus rights in this country. However, it's the same tools that are used against us. That's why it feels the same. I am a black man, I'm a gay black man. I understand and know from experience that 
when somebody is discriminating against me, it feels the same whether it's because I'm black or because I'm gay. It feels the fucking same. It is somebody who does not know, who is uneducated and does not know, and is believing that the world should be this binary thing, which it is not. Everybody is not going to fit into a system. From the video of the young man in, that, I, that, I, that you just watched, the young man shows you there's a woman who was whose life was taken because she didn't fit the stereotype. She was born a woman. She was born female. Every woman, every female that looks like who has the phenotype of what we consider to be female is not necessarily going to be, is not gonna fit into that box. I don't know how else to say it. And I don't know how else to get people to realize that that is not ever going to happen. It is not going to be a thing where people are always going to fit into this neat, nice box where you recognize immediately who they are and what they are. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to talk to people, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to get to know people. You're gonna actually have to be human and go and have conversations with people before you make a determination. Oh my fucking God. You know, when Martin Luther King said that we should judge people by the content of their character, this is what he was talking about. You cannot judge people by their appearance. We do it all the time, like with the young lady in the news recently, Carly, whatever her last name is, I'm sorry. The, you know, now people are saying, you know, that's why people don't believe black women. Black women are not a monolith. You cannot lump them all into this category based on the actions of this white woman, or this one woman, I'm sorry, she's not white, she's black. Based on the actions of this one woman, you can't lump every gay person into the same category. You can't lump every black person into the same category. You can't lump just be, if, if black men were judged by the men in prison, we would have a fit, and we do have a fit when we are judged as such. When we, when when somebody says something that indicates, oh my God, or you've never been to prison, or you know something like that, if they're shocked that you have never been to prison, you know we take offense, as we should. Black men are not a monolith. We should not be lumped into one category. Neither should all, that's why the letters keep going out. Because it is not, it used to be just gay and lesbian. First it was just gay, it was queer, it was you were funny. And then it was gay and lesbian. And then it was gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender. And now it's LGBTQIA+. And you can look up what all those letters stand for. That is why you have a smartphone. Please use it. Your phone has more information to give you. That's why it's called a smartphone. It has things to teach you. You can look up these things. You can know that everybody who presents as a, a female may not have XX chromosomes. They may have an XY chromosome. Everybody who presents as male may not have XY chromosomes. They may have XX chromosomes. They may not be able to reproduce. You can't tell by looking at somebody. And yet we do it all the time. And people who are marginalized do it the most. People who are people, black people, people of color, we do it to other people. And we're taught to do it to other people. We're taught that if you can find somebody who is uh, l less than you by society standards, then that is who you shit on. Shit on them and you'll feel better. Not align with them and you'll have more power because that is the secret. Align with people. We, I hope that, I, I, if, if you're watching this video and there is a question that you have that is unanswered, please feel free to inbox me a message, respectfully. Please feel free to leave a comment about what you don't understand. And hopefully we can begin the conversation so that understanding can be had. There's no reason for you not to understand. This, the, this, I don't know what, it, it, people are determined to stay ignorant. It's like that's their comfort zone. That's where they um, are determined to be. There's another video I was watching and maybe I'll, I'll add it in here as well. I'll probably put it on the end. With Laverne Cox and uh, the comedian, just hilarious. So uh, I don't know what, be, how it began, but I know that Laverne Cox was on a, 
uh, radio show podcast with uh, Just Hilarious. And she was talking about an apology that she made to the LGBTQIA community because of a comment that she was making to one person. And it gets tiring trying to answer all these issues all the time. It gets tiring, I'm sure, for a person like Laverne Cox, who people look at as the go-to when there's an issue or there is a committee to be had or words need to be said for, for the community. And that's a lot of pressure. One of the things that Jess Hilarious said that gave me pause <laughs> was she said, this is how I think and this is how I'm always think. I might not quote, that might not be the direct quote, but it, that gives the sentiment. And what is wrong with that is if you always think like that, you are never going to learn. Many of us are comfortable in our uh, thinking. We think we have our beliefs down and you know, we're comfortable with that. We're comfortable with the information that we have about the world. We use it every day. It guides us, it, it, it gets us to complete the things that we think we have to complete in order to make our lives comfortable. The only thing that I can say to that is you will always be where you are if you never allow yourself to think other than you think now. Where else will you be? You will, the things that we believe are thoughts are just really memories. Most of the day we are remembering things. We are thinking of things that happened yesterday. We are remembering things that happened a long time ago. We remember our job. We remember how to get to our job. We remember how to drive a car. We remember how to do work. We remember how to cook meals. We remember what stores it is we like to go to or restaurants for food to have lunch or dinner. We remember how to take care of our kids. We remember what shows it is we like to watch. We remember what programs it is. We, we remember all of this. All of these are things that we do day in and day out. It is rote. It is already in us. We could do this probably blindfolded with our eyes closed. We're never going to get another idea in it if you don't allow yourself to think something differently. To think differently, rather. You're never going to get new ideas. The world can't change with you, with any of us, thinking the exact same way that we do. The world can't get better with any of us thinking the exact same way that we do. We have to allow. We have to be open. We have to be in a, a teachable space. When Jess Hilarious made that comment, she was not in a teachable space. She was in a space of, this is how, what I feel, and this is what I believe. And again, the problem with belief is that anything that you believe is something that you don't know. You can believe that anybody who thinks that, you know, if they were born with the penis and they think that they're a woman, that they are wrong. That's your belief, but it's something that you don't know from experience. They used to believe that black people were only worth three-fifths of every white person. They used to believe that black people could not be educated. They used to believe that you couldn't marry and produce between black and white people. They used to believe that it was okay to stick a slave male in a hut with a bag over his head and stick his mother or his sister or his cousin in there and have them reproduce. They used to think that was okay. See, the things that we think okay now, we're not gonna think they're okay in a hundred years. The fact that we don't look and see that our thinking needs to progress like that and just go ahead and get with these new ideas. See, everything here, everything that you can experience, everything that is in existence is here for a reason. We don't get to negate it with our opinion. Your opinion doesn't carry a negation for my existence. It can't. I don't care how strongly you feel about it. You can't negate it. It's not gonna go anywhere. We're not gonna go anywhere. It's not going to change. All it is is going to be a fight if you do not allow it. It's going to happen anyway though. It's something that you can't stop. It's something that has been here. But what I don't this is what I don't get about people of color. This isn't even our ideation. This isn't our spiritual ideation to bash people in such a way or anything like that. This comes from a white patriarchal ideation and we have adopted it in our society when we took on their book. 
we took on their books. When we started using one book as the book that should guide our entire life, that is where we were off track. Because what that does is cut you off from new information. It cuts you off from new ideation. It cuts you off from growth. And the fact that we don't see that is really the cancer in the community of people of color. The fact that we don't have a universal understanding of what truth is in our community is also a detriment to people of color because it allows people to lie to us. It allows lies <laughs> to stand as truth. The government lies to us. Our parents lie to us when we're little and, and probably some people beyond. <laughs> And so because we allow those lies, we allow lying. So when somebody else does it, it is not the affront that it should be because we should hold people to a standard of truth in this society. We should, we should, but we don't because we believe things like virgins have babies and men walk on water and bushes talk. And we believe all this shit, allegedly. We believe this shit. And then, so if you believe that, you'll believe anything. It's easy to get you to believe anything when you believe that. When you believe that there is a power outside of yourself that is governing you and watching you all the fucking time, it's it's just the government. It's the government, corporations. Those are the only people who are watching us all the time. Aside from your inner spirit, that is the only other thing. And the fact that we don't, the fact that we don't credit our spirit with the power that it deserves, that we always put it outside of ourselves is really troubling. Until we get that back under control, until we take back that power, there's very little we're going to accomplish. So I hope that at the very least, if you're watching this, you can identify someone in your community with whom you can have a conversation to assuage your biases. We can help each other with conversation, with, with conversation, with open conversation. When I say open conversation, you can have your thoughts about what it is or whatever. You can think whatever it is, but let the belief that it is wrong go. Let the belief that you know better go. Let the belief that you know better for somebody else go. Let all of that go when you come into conversation with somebody so that you can learn something. <laughs> I promise you, you won't regret it. It'll hopefully set you out on a quest to learn more. So I apologize for the fact that this is a little bit late. I've been trying to get this together because it's very difficult for me to have these conversations. I'm 50 years old and these conversations are conversations that I have had to have since I was a teenager and it hasn't gone away. And it's very frustrating to constantly have to tell people around you that life is life. When I have to, to, to validate things about myself that you'll never experience, it's troubling. Because if you're not gay, what part of my gay is bothering you so much? The fact that you, because I've seen people in New Jersey during the summertime, there are a lot of festivals outside and I attend as many as I possibly can. I love dancing. I love dancing. I don't necessarily like dancing outside, but you know, it's free. I go have as much fun as I possibly can. And there are people who attend these events of all walks of life. And I was at one recently and there were, again, a lot of people there. So there were Muslims there, there were Christians there, there were gay people there, there were straight people there, there were people who were in between, there were people who were sort of on a teeter of like cross-dressing, had on, you know, kind of effeminate men who had on kind of effeminate wear, women who had on kind of mas what we would call masculine wear. Um, and there was a young guy there who I know personally, and he is 
he is the life of the party. I love to see him. He dances his heart out because he loves the music. He's a gay guy. He's having a wonderful time. He is not falling on the floor. He's not hitting anybody. He's not bumping into people. He's having a wonderful time though. And I looked at people's faces as they observed him in this crowd. And there was a guy that I know, and I know this man is Muslim. So I happened to be looking at the guy, the, the young man dance. He was maybe 20 feet away from me. And this guy happened to be 10 feet in between us. So I'm looking at the guy dance and I'm looking like, cause I want him to look back at me. So I'm looking with this weird look like, you know, look at me, you know, look at me, look at me. So I can tell you to come over here cause my sister was standing next to me and I wanted to introduce him. So the guy looks at my face and he interprets it as I'm making, as I don't like the way that the young man is dancing. So he looks and he's like, mm -mm. you know, like shaking his head. And I'm like, what, what? You misinterpreted my look. You misinterpreted the fact that I know him and that you thought that I agreed with whatever it is you feel about him. Why are you paying attention to him, sir? That's the part that I don't, that's the part that I get the least. I don't understand for people who constantly talk about it doesn't have anything to do with them, why it is always a conversation. Somebody answer me that. If you're watching this and you have the answer to that, if you're a cisgendered, and I know some people hate that term, if you are a cisgendered male or female and you can tell me why you have such a passionate dislike of people in the LGBTQIA plus community, please drop me a comment or uh, send me an inbox. I would love to know what it is that frustrates you about us. Because I assure you there's some things that you haven't some points of view that you haven't begun to consider. So with that said, uh, if you like, please like the video, please comment, whatever you feel. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. Uh, be respectful though, please, I ask you. Please be respectful. Um, and let's have a conversation. With that said, I'm Uncle D. Welcome to my house. And peace is never part that is always together. So, peace. You know why I skipped over the comment? Because I'm not a woman, transgender or cisgender. I'm not a woman. I'm not going to speak on womanhood because I have never experienced any part of that. Do y'all ever take into account why cisgender men and transgender men don't have these arguments? Because it's a very one sided argument that y'all have. And the only reason that you probably left this comment is because I'm not being a mouthpiece that's agreeing with you. A lot of y'all lack self-awareness. And let me just explain it to you like this. There is nobody that can tell me what it is to be a man. But apparently somebody can tell you what it is to be a woman. I was born a man. I'm always identify with being such. Nothing in this world is going to change that for me. Every day I get up, I get to decide what a man is. Nobody can tell me that. And another man's interpretation of manhood doesn't affect mine. So again, I'm trying to figure out why can so many other people tell y'all what womanhood is? Oh, it's, it's not if you ain't bleeding. There are women who don't bleed. You can't have a baby. There are women who ha cannot have children. Oh, you're not shaped like a woman. There are women who have stick figure bodies. So why is it that y'all are so hell bent on that? Like, I don't understand. Maybe you can explain that to me because I just don't get it. Because to me, when you have these talking points and you want to speak like this, it comes off as insecurity. I already know it's going to be a lot of women that's probably going to unfollow me. But again, because I'm not agreeing with them, go. You can go on about your business. I promise you it won't phase me. I'm not a woman. I don't claim to be. I don't want to be. But what I can do is ask y'all this. Why is there so much infighting? Why is there so much infighting? Y'all could use all the community you can take. Like, I, I don't understand why y'all are fighting each other based on somebody else's interpretation of womanhood. This doesn't make sense. Maybe you can explain that. These are questions that you're probably not going to ask yourself because it hurts to do the inner work. It hurts to think about yourself outside of what other people have placed on you. 
At the end of the day, y'all are fighting for y'all position in the social hierarchy. And the crazy part about it, y'all are fighting the wrong people. That's actually the sad part. You fighting a battle that doesn't need to be fought. And you fighting somebody that is fighting with you. Maybe have a conversation with a trans person. Maybe try that. Instead of having a conversation amongst each other when y'all all already agree with each other. What's the purpose in having a, a conversation with somebody that agrees with you?